Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sausage rolls. That's right, I'm finally going to show you my take on this delicious and very British bite of food. And it's pretty shocking that after over 10 years of doing recipe videos, I've not done this one yet, since it's definitely one of my all-time favorite party foods. And there's really few things that go as well with a cold glass of beer. And believe me, I've done extensive research in this area and consider myself somewhat of an expert. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our homemade sausage filling. And for me, that's gonna start with a pound of ground pork, to which we will add some finely minced onions, as well as some crushed garlic. We're also gonna to toss in a generous amount of salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And speaking of pepper, let's also throw in a little bit of cayenne, as well as some ground coriander. And then let's also toss in a little bit of herb, or herb if you're from the old country. And we'll do that with a little bit of dry thyme, as well as some finely chopped fresh sage leaves, which brings us to the last official ingredient, some freshly grated nutmeg, which I apologize for not adding with the other spices. And then last but not least, I'm gonna throw in one optional ingredient, one tablespoon of dried breadcrumbs, which not only in my opinion improves the texture, but it's also gonna soak up and hold on to some of those meat juices. And then what we'll do at this point is grab a fork and give this a mix. And sure, I could have mixed this a lot faster with my fat, sweaty, hot fingers. But if you do that, you're going to warm up and kind of smear that fat into the mixture. And we might end up with something that doesn't have quite as tender of a texture. So I'm going to use the tip of this fork and take my time and give that a thorough mixing. And then what we'll do once that's been combined is divide it in half and place each half on a piece of plastic wrap. And then using slightly dampened fingers so the meat doesn't stick to your hands. We will go ahead and form two cylinders of sausage, approximately the same length as the puff pastry we're gonna to use to wrap this in. So we'll transfer half the mixture on, and sort of distribute that as evenly as we can, and then do the final shaping as we roll in the plastic. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is go ahead and refrigerate that while we prep our pastry. And today I'm gonna to be using this very popular brand of frozen puff pastry from the grocery store. And what I'm gonna do is separate those pieces and then split one of them in half lengthwise, so we can make the other two pieces a little longer. Except not right this second, because it's still kind of frozen. So what we'll do while we wait for that to thaw a little bit is go ahead and paint on some egg wash, which as you well know is just an egg with a teaspoon of water beaten into it. And we'll go ahead and paint that on the edge. And then once that pastry thaws a little bit and becomes flexible, we'll go ahead and overlap that by about an inch, and then kind of press it down and smear the edges. And then what I like to do is put a piece of parchment paper down and give it a little bit of a rolling so as to hopefully end up with a nice uniform thickness. Although I probably should have dusted it with flour or used less egg because as you can see it kind of stuck to the paper. But I was able to peel it off without much damage so all's well that ends well. And then what we'll do once our two pieces of pastry are prepped is go ahead and place down our sausage log on the back of each one and right here you can see the advantage of forming those to the same length as the pastry. Okay, similar to when we're making meatballs or meatloaf, the less we handle the meat, the better. So we'll go ahead and place that down, at which point I decided to cut my parchment paper in half, only so it would be a little easier to move around and film. You could probably skip that step. And then here's how we're gonna roll these. First, we're gonna kinda press down and thin out that front edge, and then we'll go ahead and roll our sausage forward, but we're not going to roll it all the way, because we're going to do the exact same thing to this edge that we just did to the other edge. Kind of pull it and stretch it out, making it thinner. And the idea here is when we roll this together, we're not going to get like a double thickness of puff pastry, which can get kind of gummy and soggy when you bake it. And then to finish this off, we'll paint a little more egg wash on. And theoretically, since those two edges were like half thickness, once we roll them together, they're going to be the same thickness as the rest of the dough. And is all this fine tuning really necessary to avoid just a little bit of extra thick dough? Well, I can't prove it, but I think so. Okay, so we'll seal those two edges together, pulling and stretching as we see fit. And then as usual with this kind of thing, we'll want to end up with our seam or seams towards the bottom. And that is it. Way simpler than I probably made it sound and look. And then what we'll want to do at this point before we cut these is pop these in the freezer for about 10 minutes to firm that dough back up. Okay, because it's critical we get beautiful clean cuts with our knife, and that only happens with puff pastry if it's nice and cold. 
So like I said, we'll pop that in the freezer for about 10 minutes, at which point we can pull it out and cut it up, which I like to do on this lightly flower cutting board. But before we cut these up, let's go ahead and paint these with egg wash, which is kind of an important tip, because it's always going to be easier and faster to egg wash two big things than 16 little things. Okay, so we'll go ahead and brush that on. And once that's set, we can go ahead and take our knife and cut these into 16, hopefully fairly equal pieces. Oh, and by the way, you're not really going to be able to appreciate this until later, but because we're slicing through nice cold pastry instead of soft warm pastry, we're going to get some nice clean cuts for all those layers of butter and dough, which is going to make it bake up much nicer and crispier. And of course, as a highly trained professional, I could have got these all perfect, but I wanted to do them a little bit off so you could see it really doesn't make that big of a difference. You're welcome. So we'll go ahead and cut each of these rolls into eight pieces, at which point they're pretty much ready to bake, except for one optional step, and that would be to sprinkle them with sesame seeds. And by the way, I stole this idea from my good friend who I've never met, Jamie Oliver. So if you don't feel the need for seeds, go ahead and leave them off. It is optional. You are, after all, the Tony Blair of your sausage roll flair. But I do enjoy them, so I sprinkle them over. And then once those are cut and seeded, we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a Silpat line baking sheet. And then once we have those equally spaced out, one last but very important step. We want to give these a little bit of a gentle pressing to sort of flatten them out so they don't tip over as they bake. Not that that would be the end of the world, but they do look better if they stay upright. And then once we have those pressed out a little bit, they are ready to bake. So let's go ahead and transfer those into the center of a 375 degree oven for approximately 30 minutes or so, or until they're beautifully browned and hopefully look something like this. Those look pretty good. And as you can see, even though some of them tried to flop over, they all stayed upright. And I really cannot stress enough how important it is to make sure this pastry gets cooked through. Okay, so don't take them out the minute they turn golden brown. Make sure the bottoms have browned and the pastry is cooked through completely. Okay, there is nothing worse than an undercooked sausage roll. Except maybe no sausage roll. But it's close. So please cook these thoroughly at which point they are ready to enjoy hot, warm, or room temperature. And of course, you serve them any which way you want, but I enjoy mine with a little bit of mustard. So let me do a dip and go in for a taste. And that, my friends, is just one incredibly savory bite of food. And as you can hopefully see here, our pastry is in fact totally cooked through and nice and flaky. And we don't have any of that dreaded raw gummy pastry. So again, make sure you bake these long enough. And then let me go ahead and turn this plate so you can see why it's so important to cut that pastry when it's cold. Okay, you see all those beautiful layers of pastry? If you try to cut your pastry warm, that's all going to smear together and you're not going to get the same height or definition. Which is not just an appearance thing. Alright, the pastry is actually going to come out lighter and crispier if you do that. So I was absolutely thrilled with how these came out. And my only real regret is not having a nice cold frosty beer in the shot. Although I did remedy that right after I turned off the camera. But anyway, that's it, how I sausage roll. As I mentioned, these are amazing hot, warm, or at room temp, which is why these are just absolutely perfect for a picnic. But whether you're eating these indoors or out, hot or not, I really do hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.